Good morning, my name is Damien Ivory. In this video, I want to talk about the MBN's pricing model, pricing construct, uh, and to explain why this has deep implications for both the price that you pay, uh, but also the quality of the service that is uh, delivered to you. Now, before I go into too much detail about, uh, about that, I want to first explain the way networks work. Uh, because it's, uh, it's important to get your head around this stuff uh, to understand the way the pricing construct works. Networks are a shared resource. When we buy, let's say you're on a fiber and you get a very definite service, when you buy a 50 megabit connection, you run a speed test, you're getting 48 megabits to the like, and you're thinking, sweet, I've got a 50 megabit connection all the way back to the internet. Um, but you don't. You actually have a 50 megabit con connection uh, that is uh, shared with all the other people who have also bought uh, uh, services from that RSP. Um, the reason why this is the case is because it's an economic one. Bandwidth is actually very expensive, uh, a lot more expensive than people expect. So for example here in Tasmania if we wanted to buy a 50 megabit connection across uh, to the mainland, which is obviously where the internet is, if you like, um, you, your 50 megabit service might cost you 50 grand a month, maybe even double that. Uh, sorry, not 50 grand, five grand, about five grand a month, uh, but maybe as much as 10,000 a month. Well, that's clearly way higher than most people are expecting to spend for a 50 megabit service. So how does this work? Well, I'm going to use the analogy of an airline. There are two ways you can fly from uh, one city to another. The first is to call up an airline and say, when's your next uh, plane going? And, uh, and buy a ticket on that uh, aircraft. You turn up, you get load at the allotted time, and you load on the aircraft, and then you get to the other end. However, it's not very convenient. What happens if you want to fly at another time? Or maybe it's not really where you wanted to go. You actually wanted to go to another city, but they don't fly that route. So you have to end up taking two routes or things like that. So the alternative is you buy your own aircraft. Uh, there are plenty of private jets around. That private jet sits at the local airport and uh, sits there with a, maybe with a pilot. And uh, you call up and you go, right, I want to fly from uh, where you are now to this little town in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I'll see you in half an hour. Very convenient, but also clearly very expensive. Because the problem is, is that aircraft, which may cost multi-million dollars, sits on the air on the tarmac most of the time. You're paying for a pilot who's sitting there twiddling his thumbs most of the time. Uh, and so it really is only viable for certain people who value that level of convenience uh, way above the uh, the price that it uh, that it costs. It's a little bit the same with networks. Some people want to be able to transmit data all the time, anytime, and they don't want to have any limits on their data, and they want to know that uh, nothing else is going to slow them down. And they may want to pay that amount of money. Uh, certainly there are some government departments that do that. But for regular users and most businesses, they are happy with a shared resource because most of the time it's there for them. It's the only problem arises is if too many people are allocated that shared resource. The way we measure the amount of uh, how much sort of sharing is going on is, uh, is the amount of bandwidth that's allocated per user. So typically on MBN with their uh, bundle programs, which I'll come on to in a minute, uh, most RSPs allocate about two megabits per person, which is surprising because most people think, is that all? And the reason is because, again, most of the time you're not using the internet. And so when you want to use your 50 megabits that you've ordered from your RSP, you can draw on all the space that's being created for everybody else that's not being used at, the, at that particular time. Well, that works fine as long as other people really aren't using it which has significant implications for things like Netflix, 
which do use a continuous amount of bandwidth, or any streaming uh, uses a continuous amount of bandwidth. So that's the way that bandwidth is allocated uh, in, in, the, uh, in the RSPs network. So MBN have used that method as a way of charging for their services. So there are two components to their pricing. The first is called an AVC, an Access Virtual Circuit. And it is quite simple to understand. They charge a different price, a higher price for higher speeds. And uh, this worked very well on the fiber because you would actually get those speeds. It doesn't work so well on fiber of the node because you know you might order 100 megabits, but if your line's only capable of 25 or 30 or whatever, that's all you're gonna get. Um, so that part of it is easy to understand. The second part is the other end of the connection, which is the point that the RSP connects to MBN and to deliver data for their subscribers. This is called the CVC, the Connectivity Virtual Circuit. Uh, you may have heard of this, uh, but not understood it. It's quite a simple idea. You remember that shared bandwidth I was talking about earlier? So it essentially is the same thing. It's saying, all right, well, how much bandwidth are you allocating to all your customers on that point of interconnect, the place that you're connecting to the MBN? And a point of interconnect is, uh, MBN is divided up into 121 little areas, essentially called points of interconnect. Um, so if a person is allocated, or if an RSP rather is, is say, let's say they have a thousand services on that particular point of interconnect, they've allocated two megabits per person, uh, per subscriber, then multiply one by the other, they should be allocating 2,000 megabits, two gigabits uh, of CVC. MBN then charge a certain rate per megabit. Uh, they used to charge, I think, around about $21 per megabit. Um, it's uh, come down uh, since then, thank God. Um, and uh, But that's essentially what we're sort of talking about. So the problem with this, of course, is that Providers have a great deal of incentive to not supply enough bandwidth. Uh, and in the continuous pressure of pricing uh, that happens in the telco industry, certainly some providers were finding, well, this is a place where we can save some costs. Sure, we're not allocating enough bandwidth and people will see some congestion at peak times uh, because there won't be enough bandwidth to go around. Uh, but they were uh, able to do this. Certainly in around about 2017, it reached a peak where the ACCC got involved and decided that they weren't, uh, that, that the RSPs were, or many of the RSPs, particularly the large ones, were essentially selling a product that was not fit for purpose. MBN got involved as well, came up with a new pricing construct called the bundle, where they take that AVC price, so the price for each connection, and then they automatically add in a certain amount of CVC. Uh, so for the 50, uh, speed connection, they allocate uh, two megabits. For the 100 and above, they allocate two and a half megabits. And they bundle it all together and uh, uh, essentially sell it as a single product. And it's called the bundle, it's called the AVC bundle. This fixed a lot of the issues because uh, it, uh, it meant that uh, uh, RSPs were effectively being forced to buy enough CVC. That was back then. Uh, however, I'm expecting uh, this to start uh, uh, getting uh, you know us to start seeing issues because two megabits was probably a good amount at uh, the beginning of 2018 but our bandwidth grows by about 30 40 percent a year so we can expect that really beginning of 2019 it should have been now 2.8 megabits uh, for that uh, instead of two megabits but it isn't it's still two RSPs are being encouraged to buy more CVC uh, MBN now have at least reduced the price. It's down to $8 per megabit, but it's still a significant cost. Um, and what I'm unclear about is as our bandwidth grows, those people who are on uh, with RSPs that sell unlimited plans, um, there's really, uh, the uh, RSP really doesn't have much opportunity to raise the price. Um, aside from raising the price of all their plans, uh, of course, uh, but that uh, has real competitive issues. Or the other issue is they just don't buy that bandwidth and the end result is they people will get a congested service. So I'm expecting congestion issues to retur re return to the market uh, this year. Um, if not this year, then certainly next. Um, 
The other problem with the CVC is it creates an issue with uh, higher speed services. Now, down here in Tassie, we offer uh, a gigabit service, my company, Lontel. We've done that because we've managed to create enough services that we can get enough shared space. But frankly, if more than uh, one or two of those gigabit services really got going and was being used full bore, our network wouldn't cope. Um, and I don't, we've explained this to customers, so most of them are happy with that, um, because most of the time that doesn't happen. But it does create an issue for the first time you connect on a gigabit service. So I said earlier that we allocate a certain amount of bandwidth per connection, but there is a minimum amount. Clearly, if you have a gigabit uh, uh, service on your network, then you must have at least a gigabit in CVC uh, to let that bandwidth go through. Uh, so MBN allocate as part of the bundle, two and a half megabits. Hmm, great. We need to allocate whatever it is, 997 and a half megabits extra uh, at $8 a meg. Well, it doesn't take Einstein to work out that's about $8,000 uh, per month. Um, that's for your first gigabit connection. Clearly, most people don't want to pay $8,000 a month for a gigabit connection. So in Canberra, where we don't have as many services as we do in Tasmania, we don't offer gigabit at the moment. We're working on ways to do it. But really it comes down to sort of almost getting enough people together that can share that bandwidth cost uh, and us bring it down to a price that is uh, uh, that people are willing to pay for. Uh, but this is why when you do a tech upgrade and you're thinking, sweet, and I can now get really fast speeds, you suddenly go there onto the market and go, nobody's offering anything more than 100 megabits. And that's the reason they're not, is because to pay for all that extra CVC, uh, and very few people typically want to uh, pay, pay more than 100 megabits at the moment. I think this will change in the future. Uh, but right now, um, you know, most people, unless they're uh, very much using it for specialist purposes, they, uh, they aren't uh, willing to pay the ad extra just to watch Netflix, frankly. So this is why the CVC construct, while I can understand it in terms of its way of averaging out the costs, and the right, it creates these anomalies and it stops uh, companies like us uh, rolling out or doing innovative things, uh, for example, offering a service that, uh, that other people uh, don't offer. So there we go, that's the, uh, CV, M, uh, the MBN uh, pricing contract split into ABCs and CVCs. Uh, and, uh, and I think this model needs to be uh, seriously looked at uh, because I think it's uh, holding back innovation in this space. Catch you in another video.